Did you ever wonder where some of our funeral traditions come from? A lot of the way we mourn these days can be traced back to the Victorian era. But luckily not all made it through history because they had some weird and sinister mourning traditions. Why did the Victorians use dolls when someone died? And why did they take photographs with dead bodies? Let's take a look at a few funeral traditions from the past. Welcome to History Uncovered. Subscribe to our channel to support us. The reign of Queen Victoria of England is strongly associated with the Victorian era. Victoria was crowned on June 20, 1837, and she ruled until her passing on January 22, 1901. Despite being the second longest reigning monarch in English history, Elizabeth is best recognized for her intense devotion to Prince Albert and the 40 years she spent in grief after his passing in 1861. Queen Victoria publicly mourned after her husband passed away, and as a result, funeral traditions and the ways in which grief and mourning were exhibited changed throughout the world. 1. You had to wear mourning clothes. For the first three years after Albert's passing, Victoria wore a full mourning outfit. It was rare to see her dressed in anything other than black until her death. She set an example for the populace, who then imitated her fashion choices and conformed to particular standards. It was believed that wearing mourning attire was a reflection of one's inner emotions. For women, societal norms were particularly distinctive. Women's clothing was deep black and non-reflective in deep mourning, frequently trimmed in black crepe and accessorized with little to no jewelry. A weeping veil or widow's cap made of black silk was another item widows were required to wear. A woman entered half mourning after a predetermined amount of time, where hues like grey and lavender were acceptable with only the barest of decorations. For males, dressing was much simpler, they only wore dark suits with black hatbands, cravats, and gloves. Children weren't supposed to wear mourning attire, and affluent people's staff would even dress in mourning attire. Fortunately for the Victorians, Castle's household guide could be consulted if they were unsure of what to wear. 2. There was a mandatory mourning period. During the Victorian era, there was a designated mourning period. The length of time varied according to the type of loss, spouse, sibling, parent, child, cousin, and so on. Widows, for example, were expected to wear mourning clothes for two years, one year in full mourning, one year in half mourning. A widow could not leave the house except to attend church while in deep mourning and could only wear black. Men who lost their wives faced less stringent societal rules, owing to the expectation that they would remarry quickly. Children mourning parents, or vice versa, had a year to mourn, grandparents and siblings had six months, aunts and uncles had two months, great uncles and aunts had six weeks, and first cousins had four weeks. If you were ever in doubt, you could always consult castles. There were guidelines for how long you had to publicly mourn, but no end date was specified. An outstanding example is Queen Victoria, who mourned Prince Albert for the rest of her life. There was no rush to put a stop to a grieving phase in the Victorian era. People took the time they required, and people in their immediate vicinity recognized their right to mourn. 3. Weird Superstitions Humanity was still discovering a lot about the natural world at this time. People were religious and held supernatural beliefs. This perspective led to a variety of superstitions concerning death. Victorians carried the deceased out of the home feet first so they couldn't look back and call someone else to follow them. Curtains were closed and mirrors covered until after the funeral so that the deceased's image wouldn't get trapped in a looking glass. It was thought that you might be next if you saw yourself in a mirror at a house where someone had recently died. To prevent bad luck, all clocks were stopped at the time of death. And somewhat creepily, Victorians turned family photographs face down to protect family and friends from possession by a spirit of the dead. 4. A fear for final rest disturbances. Despite the fact that the Victorian era saw major medical advancements, its inhabitants were still in the dark in many respects. They had good reason to worry that their final repose might not be as serene, in fact. Grave robbing became a problem for everyone at the time since it was challenging for medical practitioners to obtain bodies for examination. A doctor could wrongly pronounce someone dead since medical issues weren't as well known at the time. The person in these situations was frequently unconscious. The Victorians instituted a few measures to prevent grave robbery and premature burial brought on by a lack of medical knowledge. Some families hung a rope from a bell outside the tomb and buried a loved one with it. If the deceased person awoke, 
they may ring the bell to request assistance. Other alternatives for interment included enclosing a grave with bricks, fencing it off with a gate, or purchasing a coffin with a system of tubes and mirrors that allowed the gravediggers to check inside for activity. 5. Photo with a dead body. The daguerreotype was created in 1839, and some individuals started taking family pictures after that. However, the price was out of reach for the typical family. Many people only took photos at significant life events, such as the loss of a loved one. As a result, it became common practice to take photos of deceased loved ones. The image served as a permanent visual recall of their loved one for the family. This technique, frequently referred to as death photography, persisted during the Victorian era. Children were frequently photographed since they had the greatest mortality rates. Even though it is no longer done, post-mortem photography is still done. Nowadays, forensics and pathology are used more frequently. 6. Personal death souvenirs. Some families made souvenirs out of a loved one's hair in addition to a photo. They skillfully placed the hair of their loved ones in jewelry, shadow boxes, wreaths, textiles, and corsages. In spite of the fact that women were not permitted to wear jewelry, except from jet black jewels, while they were in severe mourning, they frequently did so later. It is rumored that Queen Victoria wore a locket with a photo and a lock of hair of Prince Albert. Although memorial or cremation jewelry is something we do, this may appear like a strange practice. We put some of a loved one's ashes in jewelry instead of hair and wear it as a reminder of them. Although the process of memorialization has evolved over time, the fundamental concept has not. 7. Death Monuments Burial sites close to homes and in churchyards were most popular prior to the Victorian era. When public cemeteries were established, the desire to remember and opulently designate a burial entered the mainstream. When compared to earlier times, the Victorian era saw grave markers become far more complex. Others could be huge, almost like a private mausoleum, and might have urns, wreaths, columns, or carved figures. Some monuments were still quite plain. Large grave monuments are still present today, but the luxury has been toned down in favor of something straightforward and individualized. 8. Planning ahead. The Victorians were completely realistic about death. Even if you made it through childhood, the mortality rate for children was high, and many people didn't live past the age of 50. In this time period, people valued an elaborate burial service because death was so certain. As a result, many families spent years saving money to pay for a burial ceremony. In actuality, many ladies created their own shrouds and incorporated them into their wedding trousseau. These days, we avoid discussing or even thinking about mortality. In actuality, we can learn a lesson from the Victorians, it's acceptable to discuss and make plans for death. The Victorians weren't very concerned with death, but they did acknowledge it as a fact and make plans for it. The Victorians understood the importance of celebrating a loved one's life and paying tribute to their memory, even though their practices today appear weird to us. More honesty, less paranoia, and a readiness to have these crucial discussions with our families would be really beneficial. 9. Funerary Dolls Unfortunately, the Victorian era had a high level of childhood mortality. Families frequently experienced the loss of many children, in certain places, more than 30% of kids passed away before turning 5. Victorian children were exposed to the realities of mortality at a very young age because many women died giving birth. Grave dolls were a well-liked method for grieving parents and siblings of a lost kid. A life-sized wax replica of the kid was created, dressed in the deceased's clothes, and then shown during the funeral if the family could afford it. Wax dolls of deceased infants were kept in cribs and their clothes were constantly changed, sometimes these were left at the cemetery site, but more frequently they were transported home and preserved in a place of respect in the family's home. Children were frequently involved in mourning, according to Deborah C. Stearns of the Encyclopedia of Children and Childhood, they donned black clothing and hair jewelry like their elders did. Children continued to attend funerals even after they were moved from the home to park-like cemeteries, which were frequently quite far away according to Stearns. By the 1870s, doll death kits with coffins and mourning attire were readily available as a way to prepare young girls for participating in, or even leading, funeral rites and the accompanying grief. Additionally, young girls staged elaborate funerals for their dolls and played burial ceremonies in order to get ready for their future duties as the family mourning. 10. They stopped time. 
When a family member passed away during the Victorian era, the surviving members stopped all the clocks in the home at the time of the passing. Germans started the custom because they thought the rest of the family would suffer bad luck if the clocks weren't stopped. Another version contends that by at least momentarily halting time, the spirit of the departed could depart rather than remain to afflict his or her survivors. Stopping clocks served a practical use as well by allowing the family to give the coroner a time of death in the event that they were requested to sign a death certificate. Victorian people covered mirrors in the home after a death in addition to stopping clocks. It has been suggested that this is done so mourners won't have to see how they appear when they are sobbing and weeping. Some people think a mirror can trap a spirit and detain them on this plane, it may also be to allow the recently deceased person's spirit to pass into the afterlife. The belief that you will pass away next if you get a glimpse of yourself in a mirror after someone passes away led most Victorian households to hide mirrors until the funeral, at which point they were unveiled. What traditions from the Victorian era can you still recognize? Comment below and let us know. Thank you for viewing. To help us, please subscribe to our channel.